Welcome to As Built, the podcast about architecture firms and buildings and how both get built. I'm your host, Brian Jones. My guest today is Jacob Novak, partner of Spec Novak. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Brian. Appreciate it. We'll dive right into the questions. So you previously worked at firms in Chicago before becoming a partner at Spec Novak, which is in Austin, Texas. Uh, how did that transition occur? Correct. Yeah. So I actually, as you mentioned, started my career practicing in Chicago. I worked for a couple different smaller boutique firms, the first of which being a residential firm. It was actually design build. So I got a little bit of footing doing some seeing the projects from the contractor side of things, which is actually really helpful. I did that for several years. I really liked it, but I wanted to also explore other avenues as well. I got a little bit of experience working in commercial interiors. And then from there also moved on to kind of a completely different setting and worked on some international, like large scale projects at SOM. So kind of the full gamut of different um, types of work. But really the takeaway was I realized that I really had a passion for the smaller scaled residential projects and also certain commercial projects if they fit that scale as well. And so at that point, I kind of hit the juncture in my life where I stepping back, looking at what that really looked like, having a career, balancing that with kids at that point as well. And the thing that I really missed about, I guess, being in a big city was having like Easy, like quick, readily available access to the outdoors along with all of the city amenities. And so I kind of was looking at a few different areas of the country and there was an opportunity that came to came to be at my current office. And I kind of just picked up and moved and traded in you know, six months of winter for six months of summer. So landed in Austin and haven't looked back since. I've really loved the city. I hit it at a great time where it's been a pretty progressive city that has a keen interest in modern design and a lot of the sensibilities that I like in the work that we produce. So it seems like a, it's been a great move. Speaking of the firm philosophy, your firm has a philosophy of creating elegant, comfortable, and timeless buildings. How does that impact the initial conversations that you have with clients before they select your firm? Yeah, I, I feel like that's one of the, you actually touched on something that I feel like sets us apart from a lot of other firms is we try to avoid any overly trendy materials and formal gestures. One thing that I really appreciate is like just having a, a project that doesn't age. I, I was recently visiting a project that we're doing in Indianapolis. I took a side trip over to Columbus, Indiana, for instance. I got to visit the Miller house there. It's done by Aero Saren in 57. That house could be done today from the exterior. Obviously there's interior items that date it, right? The technology and so forth. But sure. those type of works are really what speak to me. And you could pull up a Tesla out front and put it in a on, on the front of a magazine. And if you didn't know the house, you'd be like, all right, that's, a, that's an amazing house. Absolutely. The firm's work is rooted in designing for unique environments with the challenge that undoubtedly arises from site conditions and topographies. Yeah. How do you work with clients to help educate them about what's possible and even advisable when that doesn't necessarily match their own design vision? Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the first things we do is we jump right in to a very thorough site analysis, right? Because we work across the country and every site has their own challenges, as you mentioned, but also has very specific opportunities as well. So those are the things we like to highlight with the clients are what are each and how would we go about approaching them? For instance, we have uh, a project that was located in Long Beach Island, New Jersey. We have a situation where it's on the coast as currently hurricane going through Florida as we speak. We actually had a situation on that one where the code mandated the use of piers. So we ended up actually kind of reevaluating and added piers under that residence. And that challenge became, in essence, the really one of the stronger components of the design when you look at that house. It's a challenge, but it could also become a design feature. The same thing, like 
it can be said like we just got a, a new project on the boards in St. Thomas, right? And like one of the things there is like in addition to the aesthetics of the house is really looking at how do you build a house in such a harsh environment with ultra extreme like saline contents of the marine environment. It's on a steep cliffside, so you have those concerns with heavy winds coming off of the ocean and you you have to deal with hurricanes. So all of these are kind of steering that design into what's most likely going to be a, a concrete structure house. Many of the firm's projects incorporate multiple lead design professionals. How does that work in practice? Are different leads responsible for different aspects of the project? Or maybe talk a little bit about that. Sure, absolutely. The partners in the firm are actively involved through pretty much the whole project, but I would say more so in the upfront portions of the project, including onboarding, programming, concept design, schematics, even interior development and finish selections. I'm yeah. constantly going and visiting the sites as well. But throughout that process, we also have project architects that we work with on each of those projects that are actively involved. And they're usually also contributing to the schematics as well and throwing out ideas and We'll more so take on the project in the design development phase once it hits like a construction documentation level and sure. they'll run with it. But we think it's really important that even with the, the staff being on the project to still maintain client involvement in all of the design meetings as well as the partners and then have an active role in seeing the project actually get built. Do you think that adds to the collaborative nature of your firm or? Yes, absolutely. We, we tremendously lean on each other for design ideas and are constantly critiquing each other, sending each other inspiration, different projects that someone will come across and will think is interesting. We use Slack now, so we're constantly <laughs> communicating <laughs> that way. It seems to be an easy way to get Helpful, ideas but out there. It's a double-edged sword. Exactly. It could also be a bit of a distraction. <laughs> How do you build your firm's ideals into the mentorship of younger talent as they're coming up? I think just touching what, a little bit on what I was just elaborating on is we have a heavy emphasis on exploring unique and thoughtful design ideas early in in the project. We're not afraid to be a little bit unorthodox in our thinking. And we really want the staff to not be afraid to throw any idea out there, right? We're willing to look at everything and kind of compile the best ideas and then put those in front of the client. So I really want everyone in the office to feel like they are able to contribute to the design as long as they're comfortable doing. So another thing that I, I think is also important is just having clear communication and expectations with clients and maintaining a, a, like a very high level of customer service at all stages of the project. So you touched on Slack, but since the firm's founding 30 years ago, there have been significant changes in both uh, technologies and functional and aesthetic demands on spaces. In your opinion, what are the changes that have had the biggest impact on the practice of architecture? Sure. I think one that comes to mind right away is how fast it is to produce renderings. Like 10 years ago, it wasn't uncommon to say you had a floor plan and you had two or three really nice renderings. Now it's with these real-time rendering plugins, such as Enscape and Lumion and so forth. You know, it's, I think it's become the expectation that everybody wants to see slide decks with 20 plus renderings in these presentations and it, it's easier to produce. So it's much easier for clients now to get a pretty quick grasp on what that space is going to look like. I would say that's one of them. There's really some great technologies out there such as 3d scanning that we're starting to utilize for instance like tree canopies on certain sites we'll have it scanned and then loaded into your model and that can influence like where the building's forms can and cannot exist without disrupting the vegetation so that's pretty cool there's the obvious ones right them moving away from autocad and then as far as construction another game changer has really been we use MultiVista a lot for photo, the photo documentation for out of town projects. Every week and a half, every two weeks or so, that company goes on site. They document where they're standing to take all of these photographs of the and provide uploaded photos to their software that allows us to review the projects as they're getting built. That may 
make it to where we don't have to visit the site every two weeks. Maybe we can increase that to say every four weeks for a three or four hour plane ride away. So on the notoriety front, the firm was recently named one of the top 100 architecture firms in the United States by Architizer. What impact has this had on how the firm views itself and its work? Yeah, that was that was quite an honor to be on that list alongside such an incredible list of talented firms. I think we just continually strive to provide a high level design and thoughtful attention to detailing on every project that we take on, regardless of the size. That's one of the things, if you look at our website, you'll notice is we have a small project called the Manhattan Microloft. That was 425 square feet, but we designed it like every inch of space is utilized in that project. And that varies up to, I think our largest project right now, it's about 20,000 square feet. So full gamut of sizes of projects, but we, regardless of the size, we just really focus on the details. So there have been commissions outside of residential and adjacent spaces like hospitality and higher education. Is there a desire to grow the firm into more of those types of projects? I think for us, it's less about the typology and more about just finding the right client and one that's curious about design, wants to explore new ideas. And yeah, absolutely. We would take on a different typology. For instance, we had a a few years ago, we worked on a four-story boutique hotel here in Austin called The Carpenter. The client was incredibly open to new ideas and let us experiment and repurpose some old oil pipes as oil, like kind of some screen walls and exposed locally sourced handmade bricks from Dehanus, Texas. I don't know, some cool things. We're always trying to find interesting ways to somehow incorporate the local environment into our work. Well, Jacob, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, sit down for this interview. Until next time, this has been As Built. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.